Welcome to Your Space Journey, where we venture into the future of space exploration. Your journey begins now. All right, buckle up, everyone, because today we're taking a deep dive into something seriously futuristic. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the next generation of Starlink satellites. Yeah. And how they're going to completely change the Internet as we know it. I mean, Starlink is already out there making waves, right? Exactly. Over a million locations are already hooked up, especially in places where getting online was like a distant dream. Right. But now they're talking about Internet speeds 10 times faster. 10 times. That's insane. My brain can barely comprehend that. Well, get ready, because it's all thanks to these new mega satellites. Ah, so that's the secret sauce. Bigger satellites equal faster internet. Well, it's not just about size. These things are so massive that they need SpaceX's Starship to launch them. Oh, yeah, Starship. That behemoth of a rocket. It's like 121 meters tall. I think two Falcon 9 rockets stacked on top of each other. That's the kind of power you need to get these super satellites up there. And it's not just powerful. It's reusable, too. Exactly. They even caught the booster back at the launch tower during a recent test. Wait, they caught it. Like a giant rocket frisbee. Pretty much. It's all about making space travel more efficient and sustainable. It's mind-blowing, honestly. I feel like SpaceX is really living up to all the hype as a leader in space tech. Oh, absolutely. They were the first private company to send astronauts to the International Space Station, remember? That's right. I almost forgot about that. They've done so much in such a short time. Okay. Okay. So back to these supersized Starlink satellites. What does a tenfold increase in bandwidth actually mean for us regular folks? Think gigabit connectivity pretty much anywhere on the planet. No way. So I could be camping in the middle of the Amazon and still download a movie in seconds. That's the idea. Okay. My mind is officially blown. (laughs) But there's more, right? Didn't I read something about reduced latency, too? You did, because these next-gen satellites will orbit at a lower altitude, which directly impacts latency. So faster speeds and quicker response times. Online gaming is about to get a whole lot better. For sure. And think about video calls or any application where every millisecond counts. It's a complete game changer for anyone who uses the Internet, which is, well, pretty much everyone these days. And you know what I find really exciting? how this will help bridge the digital divide. Oh, yeah. It's huge. Mm. Imagine the possibilities for remote communities, schools, businesses. Suddenly, high-speed Internet access is a reality no matter where you are. It's not just about faster downloads anymore. Mm. It's about access to information, opportunities, connecting with the world in ways we never could before. Exactly. This really is a deep dive into the future of connectivity. Mm Mm-hmm. And we've only just scratched the surface. There's one more mind-blowing aspect of these satellites that we need to talk about. Oh, do tell. (laughs) Well, it has the potential to revolutionize the way we connect even further. All right, you got me hooked. Don't leave us hanging. All right, welcome back. Before we jump into the really crazy stuff, uh, let's quickly recap. Oh, yeah, good idea. We've been talking about those next-gen Starlink satellites. The ones that are going to give us Internet 10 times faster. Exactly, and way less lag. And that need a rocket the size of a skyscraper to get into space. Ah, right. But you were about to tell us about something even more mind-blowing. I was. And it's all about your cell phone. My cell phone. What does my cell phone have to do with giant satellites? Well, get ready for this. They're going to be able to connect directly to them. Wait, what? Like, my phone is going to become a satellite phone? Sort of. SpaceX is working with T-Mobile to create a system where Starlink satellites can talk directly to your phone. So even if I'm in the middle of nowhere with no cell service? You could still send a text or make an emergency call. No way. That's like having a cell tower in space. Exactly. This is seriously game-changing. Think about people in remote areas, hikers, emergency responders. It could save lives, honestly. Okay, so how does this even work? Is it magic? Uh Uh-huh. Not quite. The new satellites will have special antennas and software that let them use regular cell phone technology. So it's like my phone will be talking to a satellite instead of a cell tower. Exactly. And I won't even notice the difference. That's the plan. Of course, there's still some technical things to figure out. Yeah, I bet. But SpaceX has a pretty good track record with making the impossible possible, right? They do. So will every phone be able to connect to these satellites? I don't want to have to buy a new phone just for this. At first, it'll mostly be for text messages. But as the tech gets better, they'll be able to add voice calls and even full internet access. Wow. Imagine that, having internet on your phone anywhere in the world. 
It's pretty wild. But what about other phone companies? Are they going to be left out? Actually, SpaceX wants to work with other carriers on this, too. They're not trying to keep it all for themselves. That's great. It'll make it easier to get this technology to everyone faster. It's a win-win. So this isn't just about faster internet anymore. This is about changing the way we communicate and access information on a fundamental level. It really is. It's about closing the digital divide and giving everyone the same opportunities no matter where they live. Excellent. This has been an incredible conversation so far. We've talked about super fast internet, satellites talking to our phones, and connecting the entire world. Pretty amazing, right? It is. Yeah. But with all this exciting stuff, we also need to talk about the potential downsides. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm talking about things like light pollution and all that space junk. Yeah. We can't ignore those concerns. Definitely not. We need to look at the big picture and be responsible about all this. Right, because progress is great, but not if it comes at the cost of our planet and the environment. Absolutely. And we'll dive into those concerns when we come back. Sounds good. So stay tuned, everyone. We'll be back after the break. If you're enjoying this interview, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for listening. Okay, so we're back and ready to talk about the uh, the not-so-fun part of all this space tech. Yeah, we got to be realistic, right? Exactly. Like, what about all the light pollution from these satellites? I know astronomers are a little freaked out about that. I can see why. Imagine trying to study the stars and having all these bright streaks messing up your view. Right. It's like trying to watch a movie with someone constantly shining a flashlight in your face. Uh -huh, pretty much. But the good news is SpaceX knows this is an issue and they're trying to fix it. Oh, that's good. So what are they doing? Like painting the satellites black? Well, kind of. They're testing out special visors that block sunlight and they're even working on making the satellites themselves darker. So, like, stealth satellites. That's awesome. It is pretty cool. Plus, they're adjusting the way the satellites are tilted to reflect less light back at Earth. Okay, that makes sense. What about space debris? Isn't that a huge problem with all these satellites going up? It's definitely a concern. But again, SpaceX is trying to be responsible. How so? Their Starlink satellites are designed to basically self-destruct when they're done being useful. They burn up in the atmosphere so they don't become space junk. Oh, wow. That's smart. Like a self-cleaning oven for space. Exactly. Plus, they've got collision avoidance systems on board, and they're sharing data with other space agencies to prevent accidents. So it sounds like they're really thinking about all the angles here. They are. They're even talking to scientists and sharing data to make sure everyone's on the same page. That's good to hear. It's a reminder that progress isn't just about cool new tech. It's about being responsible, too. Absolutely. We got to make sure these advancements benefit everyone and don't mess up our planet or space in the process. Well said. This deep dive has been amazing. We've learned about super fast internet, satellites that can talk to our phones, and the challenges we need to face along the way. It's been quite the journey, hasn't it? It has. So what's the biggest thing you're taking away from all this? I think it's that we're on the edge of something truly revolutionary. Imagine connecting everyone in the world, no matter where they are. That's powerful. But we have to do it right. We need to be smart and responsible to make sure it's a good future for everyone. That's a perfect note to end on. Thanks for joining me on this incredible deep dive into the future of Scarlink. Until next time, keep looking up and keep exploring. Your space journey.